Hello, in this topic we are going to talk about what is SAP DXC. We will see the benefits of SAP DXC and we will also take a walk around as to how to set up DXC and how to bring data from SAP Business Suite into SAP HANA. What is DXC? Well, DXC can be thought of as a data acquisition tool and it's, it's, it's batch driven so it's not real time and it also has ability to do extraction, transformation and modeling within the SAP Business Suite system. Now to do that it uses the embedded BW system. We will take a look at that in the architecture. So why should we use the DXC? Now DXC is very good for getting the foundational data models from the SAP Business Suite into the SAP HANA system. These models are in the form of extractors which have been delivered by SAP and also what customer develops over a period of time. These extractors play a critical role in making sense of the underlying data. So there are gazillion tables in the SAP Business Suite. So to bring certain tables together in a certain vertical and to make sense of it, it's quite challenging. And that's why SAP has built extractors and also customers build on top of those extractors for a period of time. So in order to use this benefit of bringing that logic and reusing the logic and to push data through the logic, we can use DXC. You can also use DXC to bring data from SAP Business Suite without the extractor part of the equation. So in terms of uh, the SAP HANA Data Mart platform, it's very useful because once you bring in that logic, from the business suite system then what happens is you don't have to spend that much amount of time in building the models you can start reusing those models immediately and start enriching them with the new use cases which you may have it's built over the access engine that's how sap hana communicates to the uh, to the source system which is the sap business suite system and it happens over https and for this you need to enable a couple of things in hana we'll take a look at that now a cool thing about it is you don't need any additional setup. Like for example, if you talk about SLT or BODS, those are two separate tools and they have their own infrastructure. But in case of DXC, you don't need any extra infrastructure. You don't need any additional server. It uses the internal components and that way it becomes very useful and low cost. Let's take a look at the architecture itself. Now this is the plain vanilla architecture of SAP ERP and HANA with the DXC. So what happens is there is an embedded BW inside SAP ERP as of 7.0, NetWeaver 7.0. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this embedded BW to push the data from the SAP Business Suite into the HANA activation queue or in-memory DSO. So what happens is you need to build a data source and you can build one on top of the extractor and then you need to create an info package and run the job just like any other BW job you can put it through a process change and things like that so it's just a normal process a BW process and what happens is when you when you configure the settings instead of sending to the PSA stage it sends to the SAP HANA in memory DSO so that's how the data is sent from the SAP ERP system into the SAP HANA system using the HTTPS protocol. All right, let's take a look at the setup and see how we actually can do this in the system. So these are the rough steps, if you will, to set up the engine and also to bring in data from SAP ERP. The first thing is you need to activate the access engine. So it uses the access engine to bring the data over HTTPS. So that's the step one. So let's go take a look at how to do that. Let's take a look at how the administration panel looks. So if you remember, you can access the administration panel by double clicking on the system. So this is the administration panel. Let's go to the configuration tab. So configuration tab is right about here. And in this configuration tab, if you come down all the way, there is something called the access engine.ini. And if you open that, there's something called application container. And if you open that, you have the application list, green, which means that it's active. Access Engine works over HTTPS, so you can obviously access 
the access engine through a browser. So the way to do it is your host name hyphen 80 and then your instance number. So let's hit enter. So you see that SAP access engine is up and running. Very good. That's step number one. Very good. That's step number one and two. Let's take a look at step number three, creating a user. Now I've already created a user called the DXC user. So what you should do is you should go to security and in the users, you can create a new user. I've already created one. I'm going to walk you through how to create one. So you can give a name here and then you need to give your default username and password. So what I've done is let's open the DXC user one. I have given two roles. One is the monitoring role and one is the public. This public role is given by default to every user. What you need to give extra is the monitoring role so that you can monitor the tables and it has other privileges. If you go into the role itself, you can see more about the privileges. So I have created this user. Now, every time you create a user, what happens is a schema will also be created for that user and the user will be the absolute owner of that schema. So what I've done here is I have, I have entered the HDB or the system using another user, which is our user DXC user one. And if you open it, you see that I have a specific schema named after the user. So you are the absolute owner of this schema and you can perform all kinds of activities on this schema. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use a transaction called SM59 and we are going to build a connection between the ECC and HANA. So that's called the HTTP connection. So let's execute SM59. Now if you come to the SM59, you have something called HTTP connections to the external, external server. So we're going to click on that. And I have already created a connection here. I'm going to show you what the connection looks like. So if you come down here, the connection name is DXC underscore HANA. Uh, you have to give it a name. So the name is DXC underscore HANA. And then in the technical settings, you need to give the target host and then the service number, which is nothing but 80 and then your instance number. And then you need to prefix the path. And then you can go on to the logon and security and you can give your username and password. This is a username and password we just created, which is DXC user one, and then you need to give the password. That's it. You can test the connection, right? So everything looks good. The connection is successful. 